Hidcourt Manor and Gardens ligger på landet. En bra bit från storstäderna och heller inte mitt i turiststråket. Trots det så är den här trädgården en av Englands absolut mest kända. Och på senaste tid så har man satsat mycket på att få barnen och ungdomarna till Hidcourt. För Mark Biston så är dessutom den lokala förankringen väldigt viktig. The community is obviously is also as important. And this has changed over the last 10 or 15 years certainly for me. When I first went to Hidcourt um, as a manager there eight years ago now, um, Hidcourt was seen as the place on the hill that was of high quality, but nobody ever really kind of connected with it. Now we have all kinds of schemes like local days, uh, come and join us days, you know, uh, see behind the scenes, all that kind of thing, which helps the community then become a part of what we're about and actually helps us sustain uh, the garden in that way as well. So it becomes part of the local identity and the local community as well, not just that fabulous place up on top of the hill. And what we've also done now, we're engaging with, with schools a lot more. And this is a, just a little slide about, a, a, again, I think um, one of the speakers this morning was saying about schools' involvement and so on. I think it was down here, wasn't it, Alan? And basically, what we've been doing now, we've been uh, encouraging local schools to come up and be part of, uh, of the garden. What do they want? They've actually drawn up a, local, a, a plan for themselves of the garden that, are, that appeals to other young people. Uh, it, I think we're very good, in the, certainly in the trust, of drawing these fabulous diagrams and drawings and, and maps. But actually, it becomes quite appealing to us and not to the kind of younger age group. So we've actually engaged the local kids in actually drawing up maps that will then appreciate, that, that be appreciated by other young people. Uh, and that's been very, very helpful. And it becomes just a lifelong learning process that from this age through to cradle to grave, we like to call it, um, there is interest, there is a connection and there is support from these people in what we do. Det finns många exempel på trädgårdsanläggningar som har lyckats vända en negativ trend till nya framgångar. Alan Rowe han ger ytterligare några exempel och förklarar också vad det var som gjorde den stora skillnaden. If we take the Northern Horticultural Society, these gardens at Harlow Carr, it was struggling. It has lack of money. And unfortunately, if you don't invest money in gardens, things die. And so the standards fall, and the visitors drop from 120,000 to 70,000. And in fact, what you had was a, a vicious circle, which led to less money, lower standards, and you were just disappearing. And what we were able to do was work with the Northern Horticultural Society and put some money into the gardens. We were able to improve the quality, and visitors rose from 70,000 to 180,000. They're now over 200,000. And yes, we did invest in the gardens, <clears throat> but actually the gardens were pretty good already. But what we also invest was in the commercial infrastructure to generate an ongoing revenue stream, which could then support the maintenance and development of the gardens. So we had a new shop, and a new plant centre, and a new cafe and restaurant. And the old... This was the old cafe, very traditional and twee. One of the things is even people who get the commercial infrastructure right only target it at the very narrow segment. So this was all right for granny, but anybody under the age of 40 wouldn't be seen dead in it. Um, and then I had a turnover of 400,000 euros. Um, that's a new cafe, which has a turnover of 3.5 million euros. And in addition to 180,000 visitors to the gardens, we get 82,000 people just coming for the cafe, in addition. This was the old cafe, as I said, and we've turned that into what I call the best gardening bookshop in the country. And half the gardening books we sell there are not for commercial purposes. They're to help gardening and to inspire gardeners. So what is the difference between that declining scenario and that improving scenario? Was it a bad garden? No. Excellent garden. Was it a poor site? No. Bad location? Expertise, knowledge? No. You had great gardeners there. Passion. You couldn't get more passionate about gardens in Northern England. Well, there's nothing else to do in Northern England. Um, uh, it was money. Because we developed a tourism and visitor strategy. 
we developed a commercial strategy and a viable business plan which enabled us to have that virtuous circle rather than that uh, circle of decline. So we need commercial revenues, obviously, for the viable business plan, but it's also part of the expected part of the visit. It increases the pleasure and increases the time spent. Uh, in fact, at Rosemore, there's two gardens, and by just creating a little uh, coffee shop in an existing building, people now visited the other half of the garden, which they didn't do before. And it's a key part of the day out. And if we take Hadlow College, which is in the UK, <coughs> Lovely gardens, demonstration gardens, it's also linked to a horticultural college. We have a reasonable commercial infrastructure, a cafe, a farm shop, promoting local produce, and a plant centre. And the project started last summer. And what we've been able to do is increase sales year on year. So that in January, in January this is January, we increased sales by almost 100%. In February, by 53%. without spending any money, just by getting some retail staff, putting the things in the right place, making them look good, merchandising them, um, creating traffic flow so everybody goes round everything. So without spending money. It's amazing how you would employ a professional to prune your roses, but you won't employ a professional to actually plan a shop. And the consequence of that is that the gardens are now free. We will make more money, because we've got capacity in the gardens, from visitors coming in for nothing from the commercial infrastructure. And this actually ties up with another trend. So this is to worry you in 10 years' time. The trend is that content is free. And this is very much fueled by the internet, where now internet content is free. Something you had to pay for 10 years ago, you can now get for free. Music downloads, film downloads. Newspapers are now free. Magazines are free. Give them away. Museums are now free. But Alan, time is not free. <laughs> and art galleries are free. So that's, if you like, something for 10 years on. So in conclusion, a great garden is not enough. Passion is not enough. Gardens need money, gardens need visitors, which means you need a tourism and visitor strategy. You also need a commercial strategy and a strategy for the infrastructure, and you need a viable business plan. Den som bröt in här under Alan Rose föreläsning var Gunnar Eriksson, stadsträdgårdsmästare i Malmö. Och tillsammans med Ola Andersson från Helsingborg så var han moderator under konferensen.